said it's record. It's go. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. Well, I'm Aaron White, and I'm here with Sarah Francis. Uh, we're going to talk a little art today. Um, I guess that we should start with this show that's coming up. Yeah, we're doing... Um, it is a framed art show. It's called Framed. It's going to take place at Mocha Art Gallery in... Uh, the show's going to run from December 1st to January 12th, but we are uh, looking for donated artworks um, from all over the world, really. Uh, as long as it comes in a frame or has a hanging device and you want to donate it, we're raising money for some great organizations uh, for the University of Dallas Art Association for Mocha Art Gallery, which is a nonprofit art gallery that... Um, that uh, really supports a lot of emerging artists in the Dallas area, as well as the International House of Blues Foundation, um, which is going to support uh, music and art lessons for uh, kids in the Dallas area. Um, That's a great cause. I think they also do uh, donate musical instruments to schools that need them. So it's great. Yeah, and it's going to be a fun event. Um, there's going to be a, a huge auction on January 12th. And it's going to uh, kind of encompass art and music, and we're going to auction off all the pieces that were uh, donated to the show. So it'll be a good time. Right on. How did you get uh, started with this, like through UD? You've been doing things yeah. like this for a while. Uh, yeah, so I go to the University of Dallas. I'm in graduate school, and I suppose, um, well, I know, rather, uh, that we did this last year, and we raised money for the Emerging Artist Support League, EASL, um, and we, we wanted to go with a different charity this year, so we chose um, the International House of Blues Foundation. Okay. But, so you've been putting on shows like this for a long time, like ever since you were, did you go to art school before this for undergrad? Or? Um, my undergrad I did, uh, I went to a liberal arts college, so. Right on, which one? I went to Trinity University in San Antonio. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when did you graduate? Uh, I graduated in, uh, let's see, 11. Okay. Yeah. I graduated in 09. Yeah. All right on. What would you, you do there? Uh, oh, I studied philosophy. Oh, yeah. I didn't yeah. study that. <laughs> philosophy and poli sci. Yeah, I didn't do that either. But yeah. did you know Andrew Martinez? Mm, no. Nope. He studied poli sci. No, not really. I got out of poli sci really oh. quick. They were all just... That was a little cutthroat, a little competitive kind of thing there. Best school ever. I just, <laughs> I'm so happy to meet you. <laughs> I can't even tell you. My day is made. <laughs> right on. Um, I know, but I did art in Spanish. And okay. so I, when I went in, I got an art scholarship. It's not a lot, but Trinity is an expensive school, so yeah. it definitely helped. Yeah. Uh, so I was kind of required from getting this art scholarship to be an art major. Um, so I did that, and it was great. And uh, I was going to be a florist for the rest of my life, and uh, when I was graduating, my printmaking professor, John Lee, said to me, Sarah, if any of my students are going to make it in the art world, it's going to be you, you need to go to grad school, and I was like, what, grad school, no one wants to do that, <laughs> uh, so I uh, came I don't know, here. More, more, four more years of college, sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> it's only three, but yes, uh, so three more years. And UD is a great place. John uh, actually recommended it to me. Um, it's tuition's paid, so. Yeah. I went to actual high school up right across the street there at Cistercian, oh, too. Oh, yeah. So, cool. yeah, I'm used to being around UD. We uh -huh. come over here all the time to kind of hang out and see. They had way more art stuff going on than we did. At yeah. But Cistercian, we had, like, one week out of the year that we all just took out to do art workshops and stuff called Brave Art. That was cool. a lot of fun. Brave Art is playing off Brave Heart. <laughs> Get it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we weren't the cleverest. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, that's awesome. Wow, so Trinity and then UD, huh? Uh-huh, yeah. What uh, what'd you do at Trinity? Like, what kind of art did you make? Uh, I did printmaking and paper making. Um, so, I, you know, I guess as a lot of art students will do, they're like, oh, I'm going to be a painter because painting is what the ultimate supposedly, thing or something yeah, supposedly right uh, but I could never get into a painting class because it was everybody else wanted to take painting so I yeah. my first class I took was printmaking and it was great and then I didn't take it for a couple of years and uh, it came time to choosing my advisor for my major and I uh, the department chair was like well how about John Lee in printmaking and I was like 
wait, I just totally forgot all about printmaking. It was like the best class ever. I'm going to take printmaking again. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. And uh, I really got hooked on it. So I did printmaking and paper making. John taught me how to make all my own paper. And now that's kind of all I do. That's de like that's definitely your deal looking around. I can see that, yeah, all your paper looks like you made it yourself. Yeah. Which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, hmm. How do you make the paper? Um, well, you can... Basically, the way it works is you take a lot of different fibrous uh, materials. So I'll use cotton and things like uh, flax and hemp. And you you beat them w with water in a big cylindrical type... Or, well, not cylindrical, but oval-shaped uh, machine called the Hollander Beater. And the, there's water and this fiber that runs through it, and there's a big wheel that, like, beats it into a pulp. And so then you have a pulp, which is just fiber and water, and it's real mushy. And uh, you take that pulp, and you put it in a vat, and you take a, a fine screen, and you basically dip it in and lift it up and shake the fibers left and right and up and down. Um, so that they interlock and the water drains through the bottom of the screen and you're left with just the pulp or with the just the fibers on top. You press them onto a felt and um, and then more water drains out and then you have a sheet of paper, you dry it and then voila, <laughs> paper. Um, uh, oh, okay, I remember what I was going to ask. Um, you said that your professor said if any of his students were going to make it in the art world, it would, he thought it would be you. What do you think specifically made like better suited you to make it in the art world than like other people like um I had, think you, had you always been putting on shows getting other people involved no. and that kind of thing or? um I really think that I mean because Trinity is a small school and UD is a small school but um I guess I would go and work, <laughs> work in the studio a lot and we're in the studio now yeah yeah and um I would go and I'd work at night in the studio. This is, you could have 24-hour access, basically. Um, and you were just always in there. I was just always, always there. I was always working, and I was, you know, pretty motivated and working pretty hard. And he saw that, I guess, motivation, dedication, and um, really was it was good. Um, no, he was a great mentor and teacher and. Um, you know, I, did you always know that like you wanted a career in the arts? You said you were, were going to be a, a florist. Yeah, I mean, I Just love like a, doing arrangements. I and love stuff. floral design. I uh, worked for a very creative floral design uh, company in San Antonio and and in Waco, and uh, I love it. I, I mean, I don't need a degree to, to be a florist, but uh, now I have two degrees, and I'm working on the third. And maybe I'll still be a florist. I don't know. Right. Um, I hadn't ever considered going to grad school. Um, got a degree in art and Spanish. And what do you do with that? I don't know. <laughs> Get more degrees. <laughs> Get more degrees, obviously. Yeah. So um, we'll see. We'll right see. So it all started with flower arrangement. I, uh, all your stuff is still, like, seems really nature-y, like the it's, tree stump it's stuff. It's very and... organic. It probably, um, I mean, my both of my parents are very, like, inclined to nature and we would always go hiking or to the beach or looking for little uh things but I really like details and patterns and um really getting up close to to different organic materials like flowers or leaves or um or whatever and and so I I, I like that that attention to that little fine detail. So I want my viewers to see something from far away and want to approach it to see that detail and that texture and that pattern and that. I thought it was neat how earlier you were talking about you almost see the like the map in the tree stump. Like you mm -hmm. can, it tells its own little story of its little of its life mm -hmm. and it's you know how it got cut down and all that kind of real yeah. detailed into nature. Like it's got its own hidden story. You just have to look uh -huh. hard hard enough. I, that's that's pretty awesome. I always grew up uh, also with kind of, I don't know, hippie out there parents. We loved going out in nature and going on hikes. Mm -hmm. and we For like Christmas, we didn't have gifts and stuff. We went to the beach. Like that was yeah. what we did, things like that. So, uh, 
What about the map stuff that you like to do? Um, the maps that I make are, well, I had my, uh, my Masters in Art exhibition in November of last year. So about a year ago, and uh, in that exhibition, I did I made maps, and it was a map of my memories of um, places that I had been or times. It didn't have to be of a specific place. It could be. It could have been a thing, a map of a thing. So I mapped flowers. I mapped leaves. I mapped like the furrows in the land. I mapped. Um, what do you say you map? What do you what do you oh, mean exactly? Yeah, that was like, it. How does it how does um, that play out? So it was kind of divided in two sections. The show, one show was printed works on paper, um, and I do screen printing um, on paper, and I would print. I looked a lot at topographical lines mm -hmm. and little fine lines. I like those details again and mm -hmm. uh, that organic shape. And I would look at a map, a natural map, and I would redraw it myself onto another piece of paper, not tracing it, just looking at it and drawing it. So it could have hints of a certain place, but I mean, as I'm not a cartographer or a map maker at all, it wasn't perfect. Um, it was my own. So somebody could look at it and say, oh, that's a map of a place, but whether they know the place or not is irrelevant. To right. me, it's a map of a place and I know what place it is. Right. Um, so it was a map of that, a memory of that place. Huh. Um, the other half of the show was uh, sewn drawings, uh, which uh, I would take imperfect sheets of paper. So when I would make the paper, I would, instead of very carefully uh, putting, pushing the screen onto the felt, I'd slap it down and it would make some strange shape or organic pattern and um, I would then take those papers and I'd sh sew them together and some of the papers were very translucent, some of them were more uh, were thicker and more opaque and um, I'd, sew them, I'd sew them together as an act of drawing so the sewn line was my drawn line so I called them sewn drawings and I would with those, I would map a flower or a plant or, and those probably all refer to my time at the flower shop, um, or my time being in nature or the organic, uh, world. So that was, those were maps of that huh. time or experience rather than those seem, an actual place. Yeah. Those seem like really involved processes. I mean, that must take forever, right? To... It took a while. Um, I mean process of making paper isn't a, like a short process either so you make it and then you have to wait a day for it to dry and then next day you can have it but um, then I would sit in my studio and I'd just sew watch movies or something on Netflix and yeah. and just sew on them but so a full time job then like I mean yeah grad school is definitely a full time job yeah yeah they expect you to be working uh, like it's a full-time job like, here, so. uh, okay wow yeah huh yeah. Uh, what uh, what else do you like to do besides the paper the stumps the maps I mean it seems um, like you like to work in a lot of mediums and it's a lot of different a lot of different things a lot of different hands-on ways of making art things that I don't know I wouldn't necessarily think of as like you know as my first thought Mm -hmm. uh, I would think of a lot more, you know, drawing and fine arts and painting and things like that. I guess like most people would. Uh, I guess it all kind of stems from the paper making. Uh, some, so when, I, when we talk about those tree stump art, I mean that's me making paper on a tree stump and getting the, all the rings and the tannins and the um, cut saw marks from impressions from the stump onto the paper. And I take those papers and... I'm gonna. This is all gonna be in preparation for my MFA show, which will be in April at MoCA as well. It's gonna be April first through the twentieth, um, and I'm going to create. It's not gonna be all tree stumps. I just wanna. <laughs> I don't want to be known as like the tree stump <laughs> artist, right? Right. Because um, I'm not. I. So I want, but I want to incorporate this this story of this tree and. 
kind of the idea of like, well, why do people cut down trees? And sometimes they cut down trees for buildings, or sometimes they cut down trees for because the, the trees are sick. But then I think sometimes they just cut down trees. And it's like, why? Why did you cut that down? Um, like I over the summer, I I was babysitting and I took some kids to the park and and they were cutting all the trees down in the park, and it was like. These trees were shading the park, and now this park has sun. Huh. Like, why would you cut them yeah, down? Makes no doesn't, sense. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and I talked to my, one of my professors here, Kathy Caesar, and she was saying that her son, uh, they cut down one of the trees in their park, and her son was very upset. And he said, well, Mom, why did they cut down this tree? And she said, I don't know, maybe it was sick. And they had left the stump, and they, he said, okay, well, maybe it's okay that the stump is there, because it's like a record that the tree was once there. Right. Um, it was like a marker that the tree was there. And then they took the stump out, and he was devastated. Oh, no. Like, they just wiped out this tree. And she yeah. was like, well, maybe it was like a safety thing. You didn't want anybody to, to, to trip over, trip stump, over yeah. it. Or, yeah. Um, oh. But this, like, idea of... I guess I'm kind of looking... I want to continue to map, but go a little bit broader than my own personal experiences I want to you know kind of look at our environmental and social issues seems all kind of nostalgia based though yeah like but all very kind of nostalgia based like a memory of something or something that once was Pre preserving things through art or ideas through art so that we yeah. don't forget things but That's at the cool. same time I mean some artists these days are very concerned with everything being archival and everything has to last forever mm. and you know I don't know that these things are going to last forever I mean, I know that my water that I use to make paper is not pH neutral. It's got a little acid in it, mm. a little slightly acidic. Um, so what does that mean? So that it'll means break down one day it'll break, it'll break down. One day it'll yeah. be no more. And I'm okay with that. Like, I think it's great. Um, and, you know, the tree is leaching its tannins into the paper itself. So is it going to decompose one day? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, yeah, prob probably, probably, but the point, you're not trying to make it a permanent thing. Right, it's not, I mean, one day it will also go, it'll fade, and that's okay. <laughs> that's good, at least, you know, you're not caught up on the whole art as permanence thing. Yeah. And it's still all, and you're you're making a, tr a record of something that is transient and has already kind of passed the memory yeah. or whatever, so the, fe the nostalgic feeling is. So, um... I really do like the air, the the air map. Oh, my wind vectors from uh, from April third when we had the tornadoes. We had it was tornado day in Dallas. How many tornadoes did we have that day? I don't know, a couple. Just took over downtown, I and mean, that's for the whole country. How did you transfer like the wind lines on there? Did you just look at a map like you said earlier um, and just draw, or did yeah. you actually transfer it somehow? I. I looked at the map. There's a really cool website that like will show you the wind vectors like moving throughout the day, and I love it. I just want to look at it all day long because <laughs> the lines are so fine and detailed, and it's just really cool. Um, and I think the wind, this whole like idea of this wind, and you know, the weather is just all kind of screwed up these days. We were talking about global warming earlier, and yeah. I mean, it's just screwing oh, it, everything up. It's a mess, man. It's like, a mess. I, I can't remember when it snowed and we had 105 degree days in the summer. Like, it's just gotten more extreme on both ends. Right. It's uh, wacky. But, so this idea of the, just like the wind and mapping. Um, oh, and this piece also has, uh, it has these little circles. And all these little circles are wind farms, a collection of the wind farms oh. across the United States. And so... Where there's a larger concentration, there's a larger concentration of wind farms, and where there's a smaller concentration, there's a smaller concentration of wind farms. Um, so I, I just, and that's you know, kind of ties into my own memories again. But driving up to my grandparents' house in the Panhandle and just like through the years, watching them spring up across mm -hmm. the plains, like one there were one year there were just a few, and then now they're. A bountiful wind farms, windmills all over the place. So, does your art generally have a link to some sort of like conservationist message? Is that a big part of it? Like, uh, no, I don't. 
think that it usually does, but I do, I mean, I do think about these things, and I am concerned about them. Right. Um, and I, I think mean, that's kind of... Is there a political aspect to most of it, or some of it? It's not, I don't, I don't like, to, I don't want to try to be overtly political. I mean, like, you probably wouldn't have known what no, that was no, unless yeah, I had said something all. about it, so... Um, or like with the tree stumps, how you're trying to remember a tree that was gone, you know, like that's yeah. another kind of conservationist I like, idea. I like the idea of a viewer looking at it and thinking to themselves, that's beautiful. Like you look at this and you see all the little lines and you see all the little details and you're like, oh wow, like look at that, that's beautiful. And enjoy the beauty and then whatever meaning they take from it, they take from it, you know. If they take from it my meaning, great. If they don't, great. But if if they look at it from afar and then they zoom in and they want to look at it up close, like that just, that's the best. Um, I just had a piece up at 500X over in Deep Ellum and uh, it was a large map piece from my MA show. And I watched, I, I kind of stood outside the doorway and like watched people do that. And everybody did it. They would like look at it because it was a big piece. It's like 70 inches by 80 inches or so. And so I'd, uh, I'd watch them look at it and then come closer to look at the little lines and texture. And that was pretty great. I, I, that just reminds me of like being a kid and how, you know, you used to be, I just used to be so much more enamored with nature. I could spend all day in the woods and I'd see something that looked really cool and I'd run up on it and get real close and see all the tiny details mm -hmm. that, nature, that nature has and we just kind of, I don't know, walk by or ignore or drive by every day. Yeah. So, uh, it's a cool idea to just kind of try and bring people to a, like an appreciation yeah. of the detail that mm -hmm. life already has exactly. in it, but you show it in a beautiful way. That's really cool. Thanks. Um, so you're you're also like a big part of the university too are you um, gonna, you think you're gonna teach with that is that gonna oh yeah I yeah. probably teach um, when I get my MFA I can teach college level art classes um, so I, I plan on doing that I think it's a hard thing to get into right away um, most recent MFA grads don't just jump into like a tenure track position you are an adjunct professor at like five different schools and you run around all day. I don't know that I want to run around like that. I would, well, would probably mean? rather teach at like two schools and teach a couple of classes and then work another part-time job. What or, do you mean to be an adjunct professor? Because like I wouldn't know. It seems like it'd be so hard just to make it in the art world in general and small universities like this are probably havens or you know bastions for little uh, small arts like this so that mm -hmm. you can actually you know produce your art and make a living and make your way through the world continuing to to um, do this. I think that there's such a small portion of artists these days. I mean, there's millions and trillions of artists in the world. And so to be an artist, a successful artist is like and not to work any other job is right. pretty it's almost close impossible. to impossible. Yeah. Um so I like the idea of teaching and I think I'm good at teaching. Um so I would be what they call a working artist, where you work on your own art, and then you work at a job. You have day jobs. Oh. So teaching college classes, teaching a couple classes, or and then working another part-time job at a flower shop or something would probably be ideal for me. Yeah, and it'd be cool to give back to you know the system that you've kind of mm -hmm. come up in in terms of you know universities and stuff like that. Right. Have you ever had a problem working like within the university, or is it like really they just let you do whatever and are just great and very? Uh, no, I, not no. I don't think I've had a, a problem doing. Pretty open to to you doing what you want to do. Um, the professors will definitely like give you suggestions and advice on how to do things, but if you take those suggestions or advice or not, I mean that's up to you. Yeah. Um, they want to know that you thought about them though. Um, Definitely, they want to know that. But all right, on I, I just doesn't make sense to me why some artists like my sister really had a hard time in her university art setting. Yeah, and just kind of wanted to get out and just live on the streets and make art and stuff like that. I don't know. It's, yeah, some like people I do path. think have problems with their university setting, yeah. um, and we've had people leave the program because mm. it just wasn't right for them, and that's 
it's fine. I mean, I would imagine that would just be the easiest way to do it, though, because you'd have so much more of a support network. Yeah, within a university. and you get a space. To, it, it's a f if you've already got your undergraduate degree, and it's a f grad school is going to pay for you to go. The University of Dallas has an art endowment fund that pays all graduate students full tuition. Oh wow! So if you want to get an MFA, why not do it? Yeah. It's crazy to not do it. Yeah, that's an awesome deal. So. So for all young artists out there, great. <laughs> Use the university system. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I have a friend who's going to, off to California. He went to UNT, and now he's off in California getting his MFA. But he's his school costs more money than they allow him to take out in loans, mm -hmm. which is crazy. Yeah. I was like, dude, didn't you realize there was this free grad school in Dallas? You just went off to California. He was like, well, I kind of wanted to go to California. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't know it was free. I was like, what do you That's... think I've been doing for the last two years? Yeah. <laughs> it's another yeah. story. Uh, no problem. I mean, like, my, my sister, she went up to New York to go to try and do art on, in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. She got into Cooper Union, and that was, like, another full ride thing. So she was, you know, really trying to make it in that art world, but it was just, it was too much for her, and she eventually came back to Dallas and tried to just hang around Deep Elm and do more small local localized stuff mm -hmm. and not have, I don't know, a university, but never really made sense to me. I thought you would want their help and that it'd be a great way to, I don't know, connect yeah. with other artists too. For sure, yeah. Like, do you, you, do you put on a lot of shows like this or? Uh, we do, I mean, well. And this has been an ongoing thing since undergrad and on into grad school? Mm, in my undergrad, I worked really hard at trying to get into shows. And John Lee was very encouraging again, and he was like, well, when I was applying to shows, I would maybe get into one out of all the, the 10 or 20 that I would apply to. Um, so I would just keep applying. It costs a lot of money to apply to shows sometimes, but I just kept doing it, and eventually you start kind of getting accepted, and it's great. I mean, this 500X thing, they have rejected me three times before I finally got in, oh. and I was, about no, I was almost not even going to apply. I was like, no. Nah. They're just going to reject me again. It's going to $30 down the drain. Like that. <laughs> um, but I did it anyways, and it paid off. But um, So that's good. I mean, it's good to have an opportunity to show your work, and the opportunity you get is a good opportunity, I think. How do you find out about all the different shows around Dallas and stuff like that? Just like word, word of mouth, mouth, probably, in Dallas. Or you... I mean, there's... The different universities will sometimes send different... Professors like my professor Jurgen will get emails from his colleagues or who friends or other professors from different universities in, in the country and they'll be looking for submissions and he'll pass the information along to us or there's just different networks. Of so do you apply to shows like all over the country or mm -hmm. is it yeah, oh, no, yeah. So not just in Dallas? Yeah, not just in Dallas, but I, I apply all over the country and Sometimes I'll send things off, sometimes I won't. I just had work up in a gallery in Chicago, and um, that was good. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see. Right on. How does that work when you put it up in, like, another gallery somewhere? You just ship it off and... Just ship it and they hang it. Yeah. Um, it's a little more difficult for me because I've started to go a little bit more sculptural, mm -hmm. and I don't want to really frame some of these things uh so it's tricky and the pulp stuff seems really delicate like you know right but i so if like the tree stumps were up at the gallery in chicago and i sent them very specific hanging instructions mm -hmm. like be very careful if you do something wrong it will break it will rip a hole in this you know like very specific instructions. Do you hang those like one at a time? Because I, I imagine like a big room where there's a bunch of them. And yeah. It's like more of a big installation oh, of a bunch of different you're... ones. Yeah. Yeah, not Get just ready. like yep. April 1st. Really? It's the 20th. Okay, yeah. right on. No, the <laughs> mocha's kind of divided into like three sections. And so the back section I'm thinking is going to have um, what you don't see in my studio right now is I, but it's basically these things. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's going to be like towers of them. Stacked? Stacked, but they're going to have space in between. Okay. So they like float. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and then they'll go up 
to the ceiling or they'll come down off the ceiling and they'll be different kind colors of, or shapes or like a mobile or something kind Maybe. of yeah. trying not to go with the mobile well, yeah, and sorry, dream little... catcher <laughs> lingo but uh, sorry <laughs> yeah no more like sculptural okay. forms and so the back section is going to have several of these where the viewers have to walk in and around in between them and look at them and um, but the, the tree stumps will still come out into the other rooms of the gallery, but just not as heavily concentrated. What else is going on in the other, because you said three sections, so... Yeah, so the then there'll be, I, I mean, I'm sure there'll be some of these hanging ones. Um, and then I think this piece here, which is rivers, uh, these pieces I'm considering right now, but they're etchings of just like this really weird situation my parents house they built this really nice biking and jogging trail mm -hmm. and it starts at this park and then you run across the river and in the river is just like all of this cement debris mm -hmm. and then you like run along and then there's the cement factory like you peek through the trees and there's a cement factory huh. it's like a really weird kind of Juxtaposition of yeah. like industrial. Yeah, really nice, right beautiful trail, it. and then cement factory, like yeah. this like destruction. And then you run, and the end, the end of the trail, and the landfill. Like, who huh. wants to run from a park to a <laughs> landfill? Like, who came up with this idea? It is like yeah. the weirdest thing to me. What was it bef before? Was it just like all naturey park, and so <laughs> it was just all like trees. Um, it was just an natural. old railroad track that they converted into a jogging trail. Huh. Um, so they ripped the train tracks out, and then they put in this trail, and but it goes to the landfill, and I think it's so funny. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird clashing of, uh, of yeah. two worlds there. It's, it, and it's like the trail is ending, landfill to the left. Like, <laughs> what? What am I gonna do with landfill? I'm turn around and go back to the park. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. that seems like some bad city planning. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. so. Dallas has some of that though. San Antonio, I felt like had a lot of that too, where it was. It was more, I guess, the neighborhoods where you'd have mm -hmm. really nice neighborhoods right next to really low-income neighborhoods. All, like, yeah. all of a sudden, it'd just be like just this, loved it, this, this harsh change. Yeah. San Antonio? Oh, yeah. yeah. I love San Antonio. Why don't you come back to Dallas? Grad school. Oh, I mean, right. it wasn't back Pretty to Dallas. Easy. It was coming to Dallas for the first oh, okay. time. So. Oh, okay. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, that was a question for me, I guess. Because <laughs> I, I love San Antonio, too. I thought the just the, the way the communities worked, it was uh -huh. a lot more kind of just such a spread out city. I yeah. felt like everything had to be a little bit more kind of tight knit. And, yeah. And they had a great, there's just such a great culture. It's just yeah. so rich. I just love it. Yeah. That was really laid back. Uh, well, well right. what was the other, what was the other room in the show? Oh, so what do you, oh. Cause we had the, you said there were going to be three rooms. We yeah. The, the stacks, back room the really, they're not going to be like one, two, three. It'll be like, the back room is concentrated tree stumps, and then the the other two will be different pieces, but not as just like one. So the back room is like basically going to be one piece, okay. okay, as a grouping, and then it'll like venture out a little bit, but not too much, so it's overpowering the other work in the space. But uh, it's a big gallery, it's a really big gallery, and all this stuff's gonna be for sale, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was it an auction on the... Oh, well, the Framed oh, yeah. is the auction. My own personal MFA show mm -hmm. is not an auction, but it will be for sale. What's the MFA? What is MFA? A uh, Master's in Fine Arts. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's like kind of like a thesis presentation? Like, it's, yeah, my like Master's that. in Fine Arts thesis exhibition Okay. at MoCA. Okay, right on. Mm -hmm. So we've got Frame to go to on January 12th. Mm-hmm. And, and you can submit artworks. Um, still taking submissions? We are definitely still taking submissions till about November 9th, 10th. Maybe a couple of days after I'll allow it. But uh, definitely do that. Okay, right on. And the other one was my, in April? It's April 1st. My MFA show is going to be April 1st through the 20th. Okay, right on. And at the, at the same gallery? At MoCA in Deep Bellum, yeah. Oh, very cool. I'm going to have to go check those out. I'll yeah. definitely be framed. Good. And that one sounds... A little bit far away, but yeah, it sounds, it sounds great. <laughs> Mark it on your calendar now. Yeah, right on. <laughs> sounds awesome. Yeah. All right, well, yeah, thanks Thanks for chatting, and uh, okay. I hope everybody goes and checks out the shows. Thank you. Love the art. Very cool. <laughs>